All right, in 12, I'm going to do question one, where we're going to use forward scanning and backward scanning to figure out these pronumerals. So question 1A, we can see that we've got uh, EST, LST for both, except for P over here. We know the duration for P is 4, so it looks like going through forward scanning, I can say that um, 8 to get to the earliest, next earliest time uh, takes 4 units and there's nothing else to compete with, so therefore 8 plus 4 has to give me 12, so 8 plus 4 gives me 12 there. Okay, so P has to then, therefore P is equal to 12 due to forward scanning. Let's have a look at B. If I were to do B again, I'm trying to find W, and we can see that, uh, again, same thing, forward scanning from 4, I'm going to W, there's no other com um, competing activities, and duration is 6, so 4 plus the 6, 4 with an extra 6 gives me a total for W as 10 uh, from forward scanning again. Uh, what else can I do? Now going to C, uh, M and N, so I don't have M and N, but I can figure out M in terms of forward scanning and backward scanning. You see something M plus the duration of 4, so M plus the 4 has to give me the earliest start time, which is 12, so we can work it out and say, well, M has to then be 8, right? Whilst N, on the other hand, we can say, well, going backwards, 12 take away 4 will give you N, which we know 12 take away 4 gives you 8 as well. Okay, so we know that from forward scanning and backward scanning, N is equal to 8, whilst M is also equal to 8 as well. Okay? All right, now let's move on to something a bit more tricky now. We've got D. <coughs> so in part D, we're probably going to be using forward scanning and backward scanning to solve this. So we can see that you're starting off at 6, and it's a duration of 5, so that means 6 going to C through forward scanning, it has to be 6 plus 5 gives you now 11. So C has to be 11 due to forward scanning, and then going... <coughs> Going to the next one, well, we know the duration is 3, which makes sense why forward scanning wise, 11 add 3 gives you 14. That makes sense. But I do not have the value for um, B here and A. Okay, so it looks like in my case here, I need to go backwards. I'd have to think B, take away 3, because this is the latest start time. B, take away 3. To go back and I will get 15. So if you write that down, B take away 3 has to equal to 15, well clearly B has to be 15 plus 3 which is 18. So this would have to be 18 as your latest start time. And logically it makes sense as well. So let's think about it on a logical sense rather than a, a mathematical sense. Think about it. If your earliest start time is 11, right, and it takes you 3 minutes to complete, then obviously if you started at 11, then you would then finish at 14. So 11 plus 3 gives you 14. That's the earliest start time for the next activity, right? Or the finish time. But then say you already know that the later start time is 15. Well, same thing. 15 plus 3 can give you 18 as well. So, you know, you can go through backward scanning, forward scanning strictly, or you can think about it logically if you know the duration. Now from here, you can also work backwards then. That means you can find uh, 15 from here to get back. You know it's a duration of 5. So 15 minus the duration of 5, 15 minus duration of 5 should give me A, especially if there's no other competing activities. So therefore A has to then be 10 through backward scanning. See what I'm doing there? So now I've got the answers if I just read it all out Clearly again, A has to be 10, C was equal to 11, and B had to equal to 18. I'm using backward scanning, backward scanning, and forward scanning. Okay, let's now try E. So part E, same idea. There's a couple more activities here. There's a dummy activity involved. So again, this here, G starts at early start time is 5. All right, 
to get to, uh, and we're trying to say the weight is seven. To say five plus seven, G could be 12. Okay, so it takes 12 minutes. That's the earliest start time for this point here to start, right? But potentially we need to look at this one too now. So three, the uh, we, we're starting off at three, and we know we're adding an extra six duration to get to F. So F will finish at three plus six, which is nine. So you can see that out of the two, what's the minimum amount of time that's required for this activity to start? Because clearly whatever this activity is that I'm highlighting, that is dependent on two things. It's dependent on F to finish and G to finish. So this activity cannot start until both of those activities are complete. So even though this only takes nine, this takes five plus seven, 12 to complete. You have to give it a minimum time. And that's why you can say that G has to then be 12 minutes. Okay, so G has to be 12 because that will account for the fact that this activity can then start once G completes and F completes. F only needs nine, G needs 12. So the minimum amount of time you need is 12. You can give longer, but 12 is the earliest time you can start. Okay, so G has to be 12. And then going backwards over here, well, what is F? Well, we already just figured out F had to be nine uh, since we know starting time is three and takes a duration of six. So the early start time for the finishing, sorry, for the earliest finishing point for F or activity F would have to then be uh, three plus six, which gives you nine. Okay, so I've got F is equal to nine and G equals to 12. Last activity over here. So let's see, there's a, there's a bit going on over here. We can see that uh, it's, it's a bit of a loop, isn't it? So P depends on, uh, sorry, once P is complete, then R requires P to finish to continue uh, to that point. And then Q, Q can continue straight forward. So we're now trying to find the duration. So before we didn't have the duration, we now need to find duration. And once we know the duration, we can then also work out for N. So let's start off with what we do know. So from four, if Q started at four, that's the apparently earliest start time that they can have. Well then going all the way to uh, 12, that would imply that four plus something has to equal to 12. We know that Q then has to be a duration of eight. That's the only way in forward scanning for earlier start time to complete by 12, but you can't really confirm this until you check all the other ones, right? We need to figure out, well, let's go backwards then. If we're going backwards scanning, you see R, so I would just put this as eight for now, thinking that it might be 12, so that Q would be eight. And then 12 going back to nine now, so 12 back to nine would imply that R would have to be three, presumably. Okay, and that's back backward scanning. So it takes three minutes to get to 12. So this is the latest finish time that it can do. And so therefore, if this is the latest start time, nine plus three gives you 12. So R is due to uh, backward scanning, it can be three. And if that's true, then nine going all the way back to four over here, backward scanning wise, that would imply that P would be five, okay? But let's do a couple of checks here. If this is five, right? If this is five, then one of the things that you would have to be mindful of, so if that was five, what we would have is forward scanning wise would mean that four, so early start time of four, plusing the five will give me nine here. Okay, so that, that's what it implies that it would be nine. But if that is nine, nine add an extra three, that also gives me 12. So this makes sense that uh, if that is the case, if it is 9, 12, 5, then what would happen is that uh, Q, Q would have to start on time. So starting at four and finishing at four, the latest start time is four. So that means it has to be eight minutes to get to 12. This is also 12 as well. So either route, 
That means there is no float time on everyone. Everyone's a critical pathway. So that means from here to here to here, everyone has to do it exactly the same time that they start and everyone has to finish at the right time as well, is what it implies. Okay, so <clears throat> there was a bit of explanation there, but hopefully uh, as you're going through it, you, you'll get the gist. The reason why I need to double check things is because sometimes there is another activity like you know how when you do extend uh, the earliest start time, you have to always choose the longest time. So that number 12, there may not necessarily be uh, the correct answer. Say it could have been five here, and then that could have been um, three. That gives you 12, right? But then maybe this was only four, right? If that was four, then four plus four only gives you eight. So out of the two, this would have been 12 anyway. But because this says four as well, that's why I knew this had to be eight, okay? Um, because if if the if this was only a weight of four and rather than eight, if it was only a weight of four, then that means this should be eight. That's the latest start time. Latest start time is 